Have you ever wondered what happens when you pour something down the drain? Or what happens to electronics once you drop them off at a collection event? Or what happens to evidence once a case is solved? From stormwater to snow removal and electronics to evidence, where does it go? Electronics recycling will help save the earth. We're here at Swalco's event for electronics recycling and I'm here with Merlan Rampal who's going to tell us more about this event today. We're here at the Highland Park Firearms Training Center which is one of Swalco's electronics drop-off sites and in addition to our household chemical waste collections, our athletic shoe collections that we do um, year-round at, at a number of sites, um, electronics has become a really um, a really popular drop-off site. Uh, Highland Park is actually a site that operates year-round and any any residents of the county can come and drop off their electronics here. We are now uh, adding alkaline batteries to our electronics collection so we've been getting a lot of phone calls and there were a few uh, venues where people could take these and, and generally typically you had to pay for a shipping container to dispose of the alkalines but we're going to be accepting those at all of our locations. You can find, uh, in addition to the Highland Park location, you can find all of our other upcoming collections on the Swaco website. Swaco and the City of Highland Park are also recycling these foam containers, and I'm standing here with Pete Adrian, who's the recycling coordinator for Swaco. And Pete, so can you tell us more about the recycling event, and Absolutely. specifically the foam containers and the fluorescent light bulbs? Yeah. Uh, so what we've got going here today in the City of Highland Park is a program that's a pilot, uh, and we're attempting to take back old foam containers. Uh, typically they have a number six uh, label on them. They're made out of polystyrene and they're foam. The company that makes this product um, is partnered with the city to attempt to get these back to recycle them. Traditionally, we don't accept these products at our curbside recycling bins. The fact that they're so lightweight and um, inexpensive to manufacture and uh, sometimes contain some food residue causes a bit of a problem in the recycling facilities that take back the paper and glass and plastics and metals. When you come down with your electronics, remember you can also bring your light bulbs only to this facility which is in Highland Park, but you don't want to bring your old incandescents, you want your CFLs that you can recycle. And so Pete, can you tell us a little bit more about the light bulbs? The opportunity for residents to bring compact fluorescent light bulbs and also uh, the traditional tube style light bulbs. Um, there's, uh, all of these are considered fluorescent lamps and they do contain a small amount of mercury. And the concern is mercury is a, uh, a, a toxic material. What we try to do is collect these back and put them through a process where they can be, uh, the mercury can be uh, captured, recovered and reused without uh, causing any harm to any, any of us. Uh, and what, what basically happens here is these bulbs will go through a process where um, they go into a, uh, a machine that's under a vacuum uh, and they uh, break down the glass, separate the bases from the glass parts, and then they polish off the glass, taking off any of the white powder that's on the glass, uh, which also contains a lot of the mercury that's, that's in the lamp. And then they can take that material and run it through a machine that actually will uh, boil off the mercury and get it back down to its elemental form and then they can reuse that mercury in other industries such as precious metal refining, putting it back into light bulbs, uh, which is a great thing because then we don't have to mine the earth for any of that material again. The small lamps can be brought back to many retailers at this point. Uh, as you mentioned, the incandescent bulbs, we rather not take those in. There's really nothing hazardous in an incandescent bulb other than the shards of glass that may break. Um, those can be disposed of in your regular trash. We don't like having light bulb glass in the recycling bins because it's a different type of glass than like a bottle glass. It melts at a different temperature, causes a lot of problems in the glass recycling process. And by the way, if you're wondering what to do with your old Christmas lights, you can also bring them. That's a brand new thing that they added last year. I came out here to uh, give you my old computer and uh and uh, the things I'm not using anymore. We have a we have a ton of potential recycling things with like the electronic stuff, and it would just be pointless and bad for the environment to throw it out. So uh, we try and make the trip out here every couple weeks to drop the stuff off. For the Lake County, you need something like this, uh, and it draws in all the 
all the different towns. So I think having one is a good idea. Because obviously a lot of people, especially with technology, how it's getting updated, updated, we have so much extra stuff, so like, why throw it away when you can do this? So it's awesome. So Merlan, can you please tell us what people can't bring to these events? Sure, Veronica. The, uh, as you can see, we have a lot of printers and computers and TVs, which are, are very popular items. Um, and with the ever-changing technology, people are, are wanting to update and what do you do with those, that, that old equipment and technology. We do take uh, small appliances, however, large appliances, dehumidifiers, air conditioners, because they do contain Freon um, and have to be dealt with a little bit differently than the, the standard electronics. Uh, some of those large white goods, um, the larger appliances, refrigerators, there are other ways to dispose of those properly. Well, at our electronics collection programs, all of our electronics go to a company that shreds the equipment, breaks it down into its base materials, uh, separates things from plastics, from metals, from glass, uh, and then goes further to shred certain items that contain any kind of data, such as hard drives, memory, circuit boards, uh, many of the materials go offshore after they're demanufactured and broken down into smaller components. Uh, a lot of the precious metals go to uh, uh, metal smelting and refinery processes in Europe. Uh, the glass from our televisions ends up going to India to one of the last two glass uh, television manufacturers left in the world. And they actually turn those glass televisions back into new uh, CRT uh, monitors and TVs. Uh, a lot of the plastics um, will go overseas as well and be remanufactured into new products. Uh, the metal scrap itself, uh, copper, aluminum, steel, a lot of that stays domestic. It actually stays in the United States, gets remanufactured into new things like barbecue grills and uh, copper wire. So Merlan, anything else you'd like to wrap up with here? Just to remind people to uh, visit the website for, there's, there's a really a lot of valuable information on there, Veronica. Um, we have our recycle and redirect guide, which we talked a little bit about, but there's a number of items on there besides our electronics, our household chemical waste, our athletic shoe recycling programs. Um, for those things that can't go in the bins, we have a, a wonderful guide that will provide at least a few resources and places where you can take those. You can always contact us at the office as well. Always encourage people, if you can, donate it first. Do the, re do the reuse it and donate it somewhere. We have some of that information on the guide as well. Um, and if you can't reuse it, recycle it. Excellent. Thank you, Merlan. Thank you, Pete, for joining us. For more information on this event and other uh, recycling events, please visit them on the website at www.swalco.org. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next edition of Where Does It Go?